once more to the tomb of Draculus. <laughs> Today, as I promised before, we are reviewing two figures for the price of one. However, I have made plans for tonight. I have a young lady coming over for dinner. <laughs> and so, I thought tonight I would return the reins of this channel over to my esteemed colleague. I'm sure he's not up to much. <laughs> Let's see what he is doing right now, shall we? Oh, hi, hello, hi. What the, what the hell do you want? Hello, my friend. <laughs> How are you? Are you busy? Yeah, I'm just relaxing. Why? Well, you see, I have a uh, slight uh, problem. I need you to uh, do a review for me. Quick better deal, okay? Look, you took over the channel for the Halloween period. I had a vacation. I need this. I need the sun. I need the... I would do it myself, of course, but I have uh, a young lady come go over for dinner. I don't care if you've got dinner plans. Wait, do you mean you have no for dinner? Or for din... Uh, either way, what are you reviewing? Oh, it's a review of the uh, McFarlane Toys Violator and Gunslinger Spawn figures. Oh, okay. Um, I said to sound like fun. I do, just this once, okay? Just this once. It'll take me like 10 minutes. I'll just do like the my usual shite. Uh, I'll go through the backgrounds of the characters. That'll do, right? Well, I was kind of hoping you could do the rest as well. And the rest of the review. <sighs> okay, why not? Might as well get this over with. Uh, first one up, let's do... Yeah, Gunslinger Spawn. The story of the Gunslinger Spawn starts in Spawn issue 174. Here we meet Francis Parker, a man who would later become known as Henry Simmons, the great-grandfather of Al Simmons, the 20th century Spawn. Here he is a deserter from the US Army who is set to be lynched alongside another man, Jeremy Winston, a local preacher who had been framed for the murder of his family, and both men were condemned to death by hanging in the next morning. However, in the night they were both approached by the demon Mammon, who offered them a deal. If each man would sell him his soul, they would each get the chance of revenge against those who had wronged them. And while Parker refused the offer, Winston accepted it, saying he would happily give Mammon his soul if he could kill every man, woman and child in the town of Bane who had wronged him and had let this travesty of justice occur. Now when the day of the execution came, both men were set to be hung, however Mammon caused a malfunction in the machinery. This saved Parker's life, however Winston died. Later that night, however, the corpse of Winston began to move and then returned to life. It had been changed into a hellspawn. Now a undead, unstoppable killing machine, he went through the town of Bane and slaughtered everyone he found. Every gunsmith, every man, every woman, every child, everyone was killed. With one exception, Mammon had made it perfectly clear that Francis Parker had to be spared. He was important to both his and his master Malbolge's plans. And so, he was. He was saved, put into a coffin and sent down the river with false identification papers, naming him as Henry Simmons. Now for a long time this is all we knew of the Gunslinger Spawn, however in recent years an event in the main Spawn title has drawn several spawns from across history into the modern day, including the Gunslinger Spawn. Now, alongside the Al Simmons Spawn, who has an uneasy relationship with him, he is trying to find a way back to the past to settle scores still left unsettled, and in fact he now has his own ongoing series, the Gunslinger Spawn, which is starting... well... It should have started <laughs> this week, however due to issues it's now being released next week. I know what that feels like. But whenever the book comes out, I'm going to have to get it because the Gunslinger Spawn is very, very cool. And I get the feeling he's going to prove very, very popular. Well now that the background of the character is out of the way, let's have a look at the figure itself. This is a really great figure, I've got to say it. It's in a 6 slash 7 inch scale. It's really cool from McFarlane Toys. It's from the first line of, well, it's from the first wave of their new Spawn centric line, which I'm really, really happy with because there's some great figures in this line. Uh, Gunslinger stands just over seven inches tall and he is sculpted magnificently. Look at the details the bandolier of bullets, all the pouches, there's got to be pouches, it's a Spawn figure after all. 
but it looks really cool. And it's a nice design just as a design for a character. It takes the classic Spawn character costume and design and westernifies it, rather than a large flowing cape, he has a large flowing duster jacket or lung coat and looks really good. Even that strange hat, which I'm sure I've seen in westerns before, even though it's silly tall, it actually works on him. And all the skull details and all the, the painting details, I mean, there are some things missing. I wish there was a few more bits that had been picked out in paint, but all in all, I'm really happy with the aesthetic look of this figure. It's um, imposing, it's got a nice presence, it balances pretty well on that stand it comes with. I do like that McFarlane stuff comes with stands. Um, yeah, it's a really great figure. Okay, the articulation of the thing. It's pretty good. The arms are on uh, ball jointed slash universal jointed shoulders, bicep swivel, upper arm swivel, double jointed elbow, wrist swivels, diaphragm joint, waist joint, the heads on a double uh, ball joint, it's really nice. The hips are this strange McFarlane thing where no, they're universal hips but they just don't swivel at the uh, thigh. It's not too bad. It's like, I don't. I know, like in real life, you don't swivel your thigh that much, but I kind of wish you had it because it's got really nice long legs with double uh, jointed knees and fully articulated ankles. He has toe articulation. Not seen toe articulation in years, and he but he struggles a little bit with balance. And I don't know if it's because the legs. Oh no, I don't know what it is really. I think it might just be the weight of the jacket. But as you can see here, he poses really well. He's not meant to be acrobatic. He's a cowboy, and um, yeah. Oh. And of course, what do all cowboys need to come with? Guns! Uh, he comes with a pair of six shooters. These are really nicely sculpted and they look really nice in his hands. Only a few little issues though. There's lots of details in them that have been sculpted, but the paint job is very minimal. It could have really done with a wash to bring out the details, like the skulls and the handle, or the fact the word spawn is etched on the side of them. But I get, like, it's a £20 figure, and for what I've got, I think it's definitely worth the 20 quid. And if I wanted to do these things, I, I could do them myself. But as you can see, like he looks really badass holding his two six shooters. So like, I can't really complain. And they fit these little holsters on the side of his um, legs or the side of his thighs brilliantly. That's also not the uh, only gun he comes with. As you can see on his back, he's got a large holster. And that's the right term for a backpack for gun. Yeah, <laughs> backpack for gun. Jesus. And it contains a repeating rifle. I know it's a repeating rifle just because it's got that little handly thing that you can sort of like bring up and down to load a new shot into the chamber. So yeah, that's cool. I learned that from Red Dead Redemption. That's a brilliant game. Um, but he looks really good holding it and because of the articulation he's got, he can reach over his back and make it look like he's actually taking the weapon out of there, which is really nice. It also fits in his hands really well. You can even put it in both of his hands really to get like a, a proper shooting pose, which works mostly. It's passel. I, I like it. Okay, so comparing this to some other figures in my collection. Up first, I'll go for the classic spawn. This is the McFarlane Toys Mortal Kombat 11 series spawn. As you can see, they look really good together. They're both clearly spawns, but the gunslinger one is slightly taller. And I don't just mean the hat, I mean like the overall proportions of him are slightly taller. I think he's meant to be like a couple of inches taller in canon, so it works really well together. Here he is with another spawn from my collection, the Mandarin spawn. Yeah, again, two great looking spawns, they look really good together. And I've got three different spawns now, not including all the repaints, so uh, the spawn collection is getting on there. Here he is next to a larger figure from my collection, well this is the, the Man-Thing Builder figure. I mean this is a, a big Marvel legend, and it's still smaller than Gunslinger, so yeah, as I said, you're getting a lot for your money here for 20 quid. Here he is next to the uh, the biggest McFarlane toy I own is the Raw 10 Cygor figure. This thing isn't really articulated as such, but it's just like a, a nice sculptural piece. But the two look good together. No complaints there. And here he is next to the next figure I'm going to review. The Violator from this wave. And yeah, again, they both look really good. The Violator has more of a... Well, it has more washes and more of a textured paint uh, scheme over this figure. But then again, that Violator is a lot more expensive and... Really, there's no other little details that need to be picked out. But you can see, look, they look good together. So, um, what am I forced about this figure? It's really, really good. He's online. I think in America he's an exclusive that's hard to find, but over here in the UK, most stores have got him. So, as I say, for 20 quid, you've got no excuse not to pick him up. He's really good and he looks great in a collection. 
Okay, so that's uh, this figure down, so I guess it's time to move on to Violator. Let's go on to his background, shall we? First appearing in Spawn Issue 2, the Violator is the most powerful of the five demonic Fleabig brothers. His main role on Earth is to guide new young Hellspawns into fulfilling their roles, mainly to make sure they uh, cultivate as many evil souls as possible to fuel Hell's armies. And he's quite good at his job. He's looked after and guided many Hellspawns up until the modern day, where he came across the 20th century Hellspawn Al Simmons, who proved a little bit of a challenge for him. Now really, the Violator likes being able to beat up and attack Hellspawns, but really, he doesn't like his job because, as he puts it, he's a demon. Demons are the natural, most powerful entities in Hell. They should be the rulers and the leaders of the armies. Why does the devil and Mobolgia need human souls to do it? He has demons. And to this extent, he kind of has a bit of a superiority complex against humans. Though, to be fair, it's pretty justified. The Violator is an extremely powerful demon, easily able to destroy many young and inexperienced Hellspawns, even years later, after Al Simmons has become more powerful and more experienced, the Violator is still able to, well, beat the crap out of him, especially as he himself has gotten larger and more powerful over time. And uh, speaking of changing, the Violator also has a less uh, conspicuous form. <laughs> He's able to change into a five foot six overweight clown. Yeah, it's not the best disguise in the world, but it's still better than a nine foot tall bug eyed demon. And yeah, in this form, he's known as simply Clown, and it's um, disturbing in its very own way. But uh, yeah, Violator still continues to be a, an enemy of spawns and um, is around even to today. And because of how popular he is, He's probably going to endure as a spawn character for many more years. And um, I'm quite happy with that because despite how <laughs> disgusting he is as clown, I do really like him as the Violator. Right then, onto the figure itself. Um, where to begin? Violator is a big figure. It's a big, heavy figure. He's also a £45 figure, so he's an expensive figure. But he's also worth it. He's expertly sculpted. This whole figure is just textured to hell and back. It's it's beautiful. He has the real feeling of lizard skin. If ever you've held like an iguana or a, a pet lizard, it's that sort of feeling. It's really interesting. He's also got loads of bones all sculpted around him, which is like a this figure overall is a modern interpretation of Violator. He isn't the gangly one from like the early years of Spawn. He's the large, roided out, imposing version that he is nowadays. And the figure captures that look expertly. The articulation on it is also really impressive for a figure of its size. It has uh, ball jointed shoulders, it has uh, elbow joints, single elbows, but with a rotation as well, which is really actually kind of useful. The wrists are on universal joints, which is nice. He has two parts of a chest and diaphragm joint, that's cool. The jaw hinges up and down and you can kind of rotate the head. I don't know if it's meant to rotate or not. The uh, lower body, ball joints on the hips, which is good. But the lower legs are where it gets really interesting. He has digitigrade legs, which basically means like they curl back on themselves in multiple joints. And it's interesting because like they extend and contract an awful lot. Is Everything fully extended and him balanced is about three inches taller than him in a natural squat position but I never feel like he's gonna fall over he's actually balanced really well mainly due to those very large feet the, the figure also does come with all those tiny McFarlane stands but I'm not bothered to put it in the shop because it's pretty much useless for this figure it's, it serves no purpose other than to provide you with an extra spawn stand but all the articulation does let you put him into some rather interesting poses and I got a bit I do like it he's an interesting one at least so Let's compare them to some figures in the collection, shall we? Up first, well... Okay, let's put them with the classic one. Let's put them next to the Al Simmons spawn. And as you can see, the height difference between the two is magnificent. He's really imposing compared to spawn. And there's this... Just... I don't know how to describe it. It's like the comic books, where you can clearly see there's a massive height and size difference between the two, and they look great on a shelf together. Here he's next to another spawn in my collection, the Mandarin spawn. Yeah, again, 
they look great together. And actually, they both kind of look cool together because they both have bony spikes over them, which is a nice sort of like continuation of a theme. Here he's next to uh, the man thing builder figure, and he really, really dwarfs it. Like, I kind of think like the size of Violet is maybe what Marvel Legend builder figure should be. I know man thing isn't meant to be bigger because that's the size of him as a character, but I'd love if like builder figures were the size of this thing. That'd be amazing. Here he's next to the actual largest McFarlane toy I own, the Raw 10 Saigor. And like realistically, there's not much. Like Saigo is voluminously bigger than him, but he's like maybe a third the weight. Like if you pick Violator up, he weighs a lot. And finally, here he is compared to the Gunslinger spawn I previously reviewed. And much like the comparison I made between them in the Gunslinger review, they look great together. They're both fantastic figures. But if you can get this guy. It's really worth it. I know there's also a clown figure out there, but I didn't want to pick it up because that I think is too expensive for what it is. I'm umming and arming over getting it or not, but with how good this violator is, I might have to actually get clown to go with it. <laughs> well that's it folks, I hope you like the reviews. These are two really great figures that I highly recommend. They're just so high quality for the relatively like reasonable cost. And they'd be great in any collection, even if you don't collect spawn, if you just collect figures. They're both beautiful. And okay, I'm going to let you uh, all go back to Draculus, as hopefully he's um, not quite tucked into his dinner yet. And I am going to get back on my sun lounger and enjoy the rest of the day, sun. So, see you later, folks. Thank you for those wonderful reviews. <laughs> if you liked what you saw here, please subscribe to the channel. And if you have anything to say, please leave a comment. Now, if you'll excuse me, I think my dinner has arrived. <laughs>